You're watching the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. Right now at 7, Joplin City leaders are working on a plan to bring some much needed updates to Eward Park. Also, the city of Pittsburgh is considering taking action on stolen grocery carts and dumpster diving. And temperatures out there this morning, some of us a bit warmer, some of us not so much. All of us getting hotter later today. We'll have a look at that forecast. Get you out the door coming up. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOAM Morning News on Fox 14. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Chris Warner. It's just after 7 a.m. now on this Wednesday morning. Um, of course, today, September 11th, yes. so 23 years ago. Uh, most of you out there probably remember exactly where you were and exactly how that day went for you um, back on September 11th of 2001. Number of memorials, of course, taking place yes. today here locally. We'll have information on those a little later and a quick note that if you are handing out to one, it's going to be a little hotter. So if you're either participating or, right. or, or just visiting one or, you know, seeing one, uh, just make sure you are prepared to stay hydrated. And in terms of hydration, City of Joplin's working sure. on something. Yes. The city of Joplin has plans to bring a state of the art facelift to York Park. Now, city leaders received feedback from neighborhood stakeholders on information gathered in the park's master plan. Meanwhile, members of the homeless community say revitalization is fine, but not to forget about them. KYM's Lonnie Walton has more. Two other males got into it and both of one of them brandished uh, a machete and the other one pulled out a katana and then and then that's when I was like, okay, I'm leaving. Tom Walters says an upgrade for Ewart Park is great, but the safety of the park needs one too. He says homelessness needs to be taken care of right away. And the people that are, the homeless people that are here are mostly homeless people that are not, uh, don't want to go to the shelter because at the shelter they have to follow a certain rules or guidelines to Felipe a once homeless resident at Ewart's Park says the homeless people here are his family and wants the city to take care of them um, So how do I feel about revandalizing the park if it benefits them as well? Yeah, not just for the community or whether the community is donating money or whether they're being taxed Meanwhile, the city says residents want a change and that's what they're doing. The idea is to put some more security um, into the park, meaning we're going to have lit areas that um, make it safer at night. We're also implementing security cameras throughout the whole park. If, if, the, if they expect the, elder, the homeless people to go somewhere else, they have, they're going to have to build a facility to house them. The city says everything from a new splash park, a new play area, shade structure, and more will be featured in the new makeup. Reporting in Joplin, I'm Lonnie Walton, KOAM News. The revitalization is set to be completed in early 2026. And officials are still receiving feedback from the public about how to make the park more family friendly. And certainly, uh, Era Park, great location, mm -hmm. does need some, it does need some TLC, yes. and hopefully it'll get to that point of getting some much needed TLC out there. Make Absolutely. it a brighter, better place. Yes. And it's going to be a brighter, warmer, hotter day across the area. Well, I guess it won't be any brighter than it was yesterday, but it will be hotter out there. Let's start uh, outside with a quick look from our camera in downtown Pittsburgh. So we got a little bit of that haze out there that we've got to contend with. That's from the smoke from the wildfires out to our west, and it's continuing to impact us here. Our camera seventh and range line, same thing. So that's why the sunrises here the last few mornings, at least from our camera's perspectives, have not been all that great to look at. In fact, they're really hard to see, and you can see that haze line out there. So there's some actual isolated clouds, but then you can see that band of haze there uh, from our camera at 7th and range line. MoDOT camera 20th and range line also looking good. Folks getting their day underway as traffic continues to flow smoothly this morning. We've still had some fog. Grand Lake, obvious sources here, the water out there. Uh, so if you're traveling parts of Delaware County, even into McDonald and Southern Ottawa counties, just make sure you're slowing down. Give yourself time to stop just in case you run into some of the thicker fog, especially if you're traveling right up against or directly by the lake out there. All right. Future track for today. Now, the this future track is going to show some showers. We're not going to see any showers today, but we are going to see these clouds and they're going to gradually increase as we head later to today into tonight and into tomorrow morning. And that'll be courtesy of Francine, which we'll talk about here in just a moment. 65 in Joplin, 11 degrees cooler in Pittsburgh at 54. And that's how it's been all morning. We've got this broad range of temperatures from the low 50s 
to the upper 60s, an almost 20 degree spread of temperatures out there this morning. However, all of us will be heating up later today. Average highs are the mid 80s. We're talking around 90 today. And again, as we head into the afternoon, we'll start to see a few more clouds out there. So we got Francine set to make landfall a little later tonight, and we'll talk about that, whether or not it'll have an impact on our weather and some rain chances next week here in just a few more minutes. Elise. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, Parsons, Kansas police make an arrest in a kidnapping case. Authorities on Sunday responded to a robbery at a room at the Canterbury Inn, where they say a suspect with a yellow bandana and an AR style rifle kidnapped a woman and stole nearly $500 and a set of car keys. They say the suspect was later found at a home on Deer Street where the victim was rescued. Official charges have not yet been filed. Authorities in Jasper County have arrested a suspect in the deaths of eight puppies found in a plastic tote outside the Joplin Humane Society. Humane Society officials say the tote was discovered this past weekend in a spot where it was not easily seen. All of the puppies were found dead inside. Now the sheriff's office says the suspect is in custody, though official charges are pending. Authorities also have a person of interest in this case who was arrested for outstanding warrants. The Pittsburgh City Commission is discussing cracking down on people who take shopping carts from grocery stores and rummage through trash bins. KOAM's Melissa Alexis spoke to community members about their perspective. It's a quality of life issue. An ordinance could make taking shopping carts off the premises of a store illegal. The Director of Community Development for the City of Pittsburgh says the frequency of shopping cart theft is an issue. We found that it's more frequent than we'd like and it's also really difficult for the retailers to recoup that cost. Shopping carts are really expensive. The City of Pittsburgh is also considering making it illegal to go through trash bins that are not your own without permission. Others are coming behind them and digging through, leaving trash out. That's blowing down the streets, it's blowing down our alleys, there's paper, there's cardboard, there's furniture, there's household goods. As a business owner would come to my shop and I'd find trash all over the yard and it's because somebody is scrounging through the dumpster. Community member Roger Lomshek says many people pushing the carts are unhoused. We've got homeless people who use the shopping carts as a means of carrying around stolen goods and the carts themselves are stolen. Mandy Yance, who frequents the Wesley House, says making it illegal to take things from trash bins and selling them would eliminate a way for the unhoused to make money. She also believes making it illegal to take shopping carts away from a store premises would make things more difficult for the unhoused. They need the shopping carts to carry their stuff from point A to point B. How are they supposed to get it from point A to point B without something to carry it in? Froman, Director of Community Development and Housing, says both ordinances are related to keeping the city of Pittsburgh clean and addressing concerns from stores that had their shopping carts stolen. Reporting in Pittsburgh, Melissa Alexis, KOAM News. Commissioners passed both ordinances on first reading last night. And those are our top news stories this half hour. Coming up next, Ms. Wildcat Wednesday and Julie Smith and Valerie Stone join us to share how you can receive help during this year's Victor election coverage. We'll be right back, but first, let's take a moment to honor those who died on this day 23 years ago. Welcome back. It's that time of year when we need to look over our current Medicare coverage plan. However, it can be confusing to understand what is needed and what's not. Now, Julie Smith and Valerie Stone, the Wildcat Research Extension Office, are with us this morning with an invitation to several upcoming classes to help sort out any confusion and to learn more. Of course, welcome to you both. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. So talk to me um, for those who might not know or are familiar but might need a refresher with the Medicare election period. Okay, well, the election period starts for Part D um, prescription drug mm -hmm. plans. To change that, starts October 15th and runs through December 7th. Yes. So we work for K-State, but we have partnered with the Area Agency on Aging, okay. who have the grant, um, to train all of us mm -hmm. to be SHIC counselors. So that is Senior Health Insurance Counselors for Kansas. 
Absolutely, yes. And so um, for these for these classes, these free consultations that you're offering, um, what can people learn or expect when they attend one of these classes? Basically, it's a one on one meeting mm -hmm. with beneficiaries mm -hmm. to kind of go over what their prescriptions are this year, what the plans are for the next year mm -hmm. and make sure we can help them match them specifically to their needs for the right plan, because every single year, um, companies come out with new plans right. and they cover drugs differently and um, a lot of beneficiaries will get on a plan and stay on that same plan for sure. years and not realizing that they can save a lot of money by doing a, this comparison every year during that open election period. Absolutely, so, certainly something to take advantage of. Mm -hmm. This is also open to people who are considering switching or, or joining in Medicare as well. Mm -hmm. We do Medicare consultations mm -hmm. all year yes. for new to Medicare, okay. um, but this specific time is mostly for Part D or Medicare Advantage sure. beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. And then those um, plans will start on December, or I'm sorry, on January 1st. So mm -hmm. October 15th to December 7th is the time to pick for the next following year. Absolutely, and that's when these consultations begin as well, and you're having um, a number of them across Southeast Kansas. Talk to me a little bit about some of those locations and where people can find more information about it as well. So we have probably 12 to 15 counselors right. throughout Southeast mm -hmm. Kansas. Um, Julie and I cover the Wildcat District, so we're gonna be in Fredonia, Neotache, Independence, Parsons, Pittsburgh, Girard, um, so we'll be in all of those okay. areas and we, we will advertise, but if anybody wants to know mm -hmm. where in their area to go, typically it's a senior center, sometimes it's a library, they can just call the K-State Research and Extension Office in their area and find out where they need to go and they can get signed up. Perfect. And it's important that people understand that we're not trying to sell anything. Right. We are just there to help them see yes. what would be their best benefit. Absolutely. Very helpful resource there. And is there a place where people can also schedule an appointment? Do you recommend that they do so beforehand? Yeah, we have, um, like Valerie talked mm -hmm. about, we have some of these sessions that are day long right. where we'll be meeting with people in towns. But then they could call our office and we can, if that date doesn't work, we can do one-on-one -on -one meetings throughout that time um, at their convenience. Mm -hmm. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being with us this morning. We'll be right back with more right after this. Thank you. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News 716 now on this Wednesday morning here in the four states. We're going to start with the future track, talk about the clouds, and we'll start to see a few more of them as we head into the afternoon and evening hours. And while the future track is painting showers out there today, there will be no showers. Uh, it's just a little, you know, hiccup in the, in the computer com uh, software there. No showers, though, but clouds do increase and they will continue to increase as we head into Thursday. And that's because of Francine, which will make landfall later this evening uh, down in southern Louisiana. And it's got a very wide cloud shield around it. So even though it'll still be well to our south and east by Thursday morning, we'll still be getting clouds out there now. There could be an isolated shower too. There's still some debate in the computer data and exactly what we're going to get from Francine. Unfortunately, most of it says we're not going to get anything, but this one is suggesting the possibility of a stray shower too from Francine as we head into Thursday. But then the others are all kind of looking more like this. We will be mostly cloudy through our Thursday. And then as we go later into Friday, we'll actually start to see clouds uh, decreasing as Francine continues to lift north around the St. Louis area as we head through our Friday. So let's talk about Francine real quick. Winds are at 90, still a category one storm, and it will, is expected to make landfall again later this evening in southern Louisiana as a category two storm. So winds we're talking about 100 miles an hour out there. Be a subtropical storm by the time it gets north of Jackson, Mississippi, and that'll be tomorrow afternoon around one. And then as we head into Friday afternoon, we've got that center of circulation just to the northwest of Memphis. So again, uh, those who recall yesterday, the cone here on the track, that cone of uncertainty stretched initially from Springfield to Nashville, and it has been significantly narrowed. We're getting much more better data as to exactly where it's going to go. Now, Francine does manage to drift a little further west that we could get a few additional showers as we go into our Friday east of 69. But in all honesty, one thing that's been relatively consistent, it's going to keep Francine well to our east. And we'll show you on the future track too 
what we're looking at. So you can see how broad the clouds are going well up into Illinois and Iowa, even though the center of circulation by Thursday afternoon is still across Mississippi is a broad range of clouds. That's why we're going to go mostly cloudy on our Thursday. At this point, the most we're expecting from Francine is it's going to bring our temperatures back down to about average out there with the bulk of the rain staying to our east that center of circulation gradually lifting off to the north out there. Uh, but again, maybe a stray shower too because we could certainly use it. Uh, the other thing we've been contending with over the last several days is the haze and that's the smoke from those wildfires out to the west and we're going to continue to see that across the area as we go through our Wednesday and into our Thursday. Now by Thursday as the clouds begin to thicken up we're not going to be able to really tell that difference but nonetheless it'll still be present and take a look you can see it very clearly our camera at 7th and range line there's that haze out there across the area. So even though we've got clear skies well overhead, the haze kind of blocking some of that. 65 in Joplin, wind is variable at about three. And around the area, we've had almost a 20 degree range of temperatures. We're talking low 50s to the upper 60s across the area. So a very wide range of temperatures this morning. So Yates Center, for example, though, you are the same now as you were 24 hours ago, where other communities are upwards of 15 degrees warmer now than where we were 24 hours ago. We're all going to be warmer today, though. Average high mid 80s. We're going to be going above that mid 60s at 8. Low 80s by 11 o'clock this morning. Our highs today right around 90. Some of you may make 91, 92. Francine's cloud cover gives us normal temperatures or somewhat normal temperatures Thursday and Friday. We head into the weekend. Temperatures will begin to heat back up above average to about 90. And then we've got some isolated to widely scattered shower and thunderstorm chances as we head into the next work week. Let's check your forecast. We'll be back with more of the KOM Morning News right after this. Welcome back. The Missouri Job Center is looking to help bring together today's employers in trade industries with area youth. We have Pam Reagan from the Missouri Job Center with us this morning with an invitation to an event that will help bridge the gap. Welcome to you. Thank you so much for being with us Good this morning. morning. Thank yeah. you. Of course, happy to have you. So talk to me about this event called Build My Future. So Build My Future is a career expo that is going to focus this year on the construction trades as well as advanced mm -hmm. manufacturing. So we have all of our employers in the area come in for this expo, hands-on yes. activities for all of the youth to participate oh, in. Fantastic. And just we're still needing employers mm. to sign up for our event. Absolutely. And then <coughs> what types of employers are you looking for and how can they apply if they want to be a part of this expo? So any kind of employer that is in remotely related mm. to construction mm -hmm. or manufacturing, we're looking at from the dirt work to sure. the finished product yes. to interior design, architecture, welding, bar, you know, construction, mm. the whole gamut, as well as anything with the manufacturing. Fantastic. And then where can they apply? And is there any cost to apply? So the application, they can go to Build My mm. Future in Southwest Missouri, and the application sure. link is yes. there. And there is a fee for that, mm -hmm. and it depends on whether they're going to be outside or inside right. and how yes. much space they need and all of those kinds of sponsorships that are available. Certainly, certainly. And then for um, students who are wanting to attend this, now it's eighth grade to seniors. So, Correct. Yes, so where can they do so? And is this open to just more than Southwest Missouri students? It is, and they would apply at the same spot. There's mm -hmm. a, once you go to that site, there's a link for ex for our exhibitors and there's a link for our students. And they can sign up by school. If they're homeschooled, oh, they can sign yes. up individually. Mm -hmm. They can sign up as a group. We will take any youth that wants to come. And we do invite Kansas. We have some from Oklahoma and Arkansas, as well as all of Southwest Missouri. Absolutely. And then when is the Build My Future event and where will it be held? It's October 17th and it will be in the old Macy's building at North Park Mall in Joplin. Fantastic. And then is, that's going to be at 9 a.m. as well? Yes, from 9 right. to 2. Wonderful. And is there any deadline for um, employers wanting to apply? Um, not really. Okay. Um, we would probably take them up to sure. that that very week. Absolutely. You know, the week before probably would be good so we can yes. plan where to set <laughs> tables and things like that. So well, fantastic. It sounds like it's going to be a wonderful expo and, and lots to learn for students and employers as well. So Absolutely. Thank, of course. Thank you for being with us this morning. If you'd like to learn more information, you can use the website and phone number located at the bottom of your screen. Stick around. We're back with more right after this. The four states most watched news starts now.
Welcome back to the KOA Morning News on Fox 14. It's currently 728. I'm Elise Snowy. Mercy announces it will end its contracts with Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield in Missouri on January 1st. This will impact all commercial Medicare Advantage and other plans. Now until then, Mercy will stay in network with Anthem. Mercy Pharmacy Services, however, will continue for Anthem patients. Mercy officials say they encourage patients to share their concerns with Anthem by calling the number on the back of their insurance cards. The Webb City Public Library is teaching people how to make healthier choices when it comes to food. Yesterday, the library hosted a healthy eating workshop, the first of five. This one focused on changing to healthy habits. Now each workshop will also feature a certain healthy dish for people to learn. Yesterday, that dish was fruit salad. So finding the resources like that and finding recipes, we try to pick recipes. We're gonna do some um, cooking, different things. Like today, we're gonna make a fruit salad. So different ways, you know, to find your resources cheaper so that you can, you know, have good healthy meals with your family. The library will host a workshop every Tuesday through October 8th from 11 a.m. to noon. The next week's workshop focuses on food safety and will teach people how to make a chicken, broccoli and cheese skillet. Pro-life organizations gathered outside the new Planned Parenthood Clinic in Pittsburgh to express their views. KOM Samantha Walker has the details from that press conference. The Pittsburgh Health Center just recently opened, becoming the fourth Planned Parenthood clinic in the state. When the organization announced the facility, it described Southeast Kansas as one of the most underserved areas statewide. Several pro-life organizations gathered outside of the Pittsburgh location, including Operation Rescue and Students for Life of America. Organizers say they want to bring attention to the new facility and the fact abortions are performed there. They say they're also concerned about the center's proximity to Pittsburgh State University and the states of Missouri, Arkansas and Oklahoma, which have more restrictive abortion laws. We're concerned that this facility is going to be a regional abortion facility that promotes abortion to women from these states. And we just want to come out here and oppose Planned Parenthood's pro-abortion agenda because we believe it's bad for families and bad for women and unborn children. In a statement to KOAM, a spokesperson for Planned Parenthood called the event a, quote, unnecessary disruption to the patients who come to Planned Parenthood for essential, comprehensive sexual and reproductive health care services. The organization says it's grateful for the support they've received from the community. And those are our top local stories. Now here's Chris with a quick look at your forecast. Warmer start out there for us today, at least for some of us. Others are right about where we were yesterday. Live look from our camera downtown Pittsburgh. You can see the haze out there, and that's again from those smokes, uh, the smoke from the wildfires, and you can get a better view of it uh, from our camera at 7th and Range Line. We've got the blue skies overhead, and then we've got that uh, smoky haze down a little lower out there. Modoc camera 20th and Range Line also looking good as folks get their Wednesday commute underway. Fog tracker is now clear, but we had had uh, some fog around the Grand Lake area earlier this morning. Morning, but it has since uh, started to clear up, but still do be cautious. Watch out. You never know what you might run into on the future track. All we're really going to see is some extra clouds as we start to head into the afternoon. These showers are not actually going to happen. We'll just have a few clouds as we go through the evening. They'll begin to increase overnight and into our Thursday. This is what I'm talking about. That spread of temperature 65 in Joplin, 10 degrees cooler just up the road in Pittsburgh, sitting at 55. And that spread is anywhere from the low 50s in Yates Center to the mid to upper 60s across parts of southwest Missouri. So it's a very, very varied start. So Yates Center, for example, you're about the same as you were at this time yesterday, whereas Carthage is almost 15 degrees warmer than where they were yesterday at this time. Sunny skies through the morning, mostly clear skies as we had the afternoon and evening highs above normal as we go right around 90 degrees. Average is about 85. Francine making landfall later this afternoon, the evening into southern Louisiana. We'll talk about whether or not it'll have an impact on our weather and some rain chances next week here in just a few more minutes. Elise. All right, see you soon. Well, in one of the most important debates of their careers, former President Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris faced off against one another in Philadelphia. Both candidates working to court voters as Election Day looms closer. Fox News correspondent Connor Hansen has more from Philadelphia.
No audience, no notes, and muted mics while their opponent was speaking. Those were the ground rules while former President Trump and Vice President Harris faced off on the debate stage for the first time and possibly the only time tonight. With less than two months until Election Day, former President Trump and Vice President Harris wasted no time diving into policy in their first face-to-face -face meeting in Philadelphia. The economy, the top issue among voters, taking center stage. Donald Trump has no plan for you. And when you look at his economic plan, it's all about tax breaks for the richest people. I had no inflation, virtually no inflation. They had the highest inflation perhaps in the history of our country. As each candidate laid out their vision for the country, they also attacked each other on key issues. Trump hit Harris hard on the border and crime. Crime in this country is through the roof, and we have a new form of crime. It's called migrant crime. Meanwhile, Harris went after Trump's record on reproductive rights. If Donald Trump were to be reelected, he will sign a national abortion ban. And moving on to foreign policy, the candidates spoke about the wars in Gaza and Ukraine. I will always give Israel the ability to defend itself, in particular as it relates to, as it relates to Iran and any threat that Iran and its proxies pose to Israel. But we must have a two-state solution. If I were president, Russia would have never, ever have gone into Ukraine and killed millions of people. Polling shows both candidates virtually tied in crucial swing states, making tonight's appeal to undecided voters even more important. I pledge to you to be a president for all Americans. It's a very simple phrase, make America great again. If she becomes president, this country doesn't have a chance of success. With the debate now over, both candidates will be heading back to the campaign trail. But first, they'll both be marking 23 years since the September 11th attacks by attending events in New York and Pennsylvania. In Philadelphia, Connor Hansen, Fox News. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOAM Morning News. Nearly half a million vinyl records were bought in the U.S. last year. We'll have a chance to visit one of the biggest record stores in California. We'll be right back, but before we head to break, let's take a moment to remember the fallen from 9-11. In Consumer Watch this morning, Many Americans may have been affected by a Medicare data breach. Now, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services says a hack last year may have compromised the personal information of nearly 1 million Medicare beneficiaries. CMS reports the breach took place between May 27th to May 31st in 2023. Now, no fraud cases have been reported in relation to the incident, but those who may have been affected can receive 12 months of free credit monitoring through Experian. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says it wants new testing and performance regulations for SUVs and pickups in all passenger vehicles weighing 10,000 pounds or more. The proposal comes as SUVs and pickups have grown in size, creating blind spots for drivers and seeing pedestrians. The new rules would set test procedures to simulate head to hood impact and requirements to reduce risks of head injuries. Another Justice Department case against Google. This one concerns the search engine giants ad tech practices. Fox Business correspondent Grady Trimble has the details. For the second time in two years, Google is on trial for antitrust violations. This time around, the Department of Justice is trying to make the case that Google has an illegal monopoly on the technology needed to place those display or banner ads you see when you visit just about any website. The DOJ has been showing this chart several times in court. It looks complicated, but they're really just trying to use it to illustrate that Google has its hands in every step of the process of buying and selling those online ads. They likened Google's position in the market to JP Morgan owning the New York Stock Exchange. One of the DOJ's witnesses, the CEO of a smaller ad tech company, explained how Google prevented his company from gaining access to some of Google's ad tech. But on cross-examination, Google's attorneys tried to show that his company would stand to benefit financially if Google shared that technology. 
Another DOJ witness, an executive at Gannett, which owns USA Today, testified that USA Today and Gannett's ad revenue declined while Google became more dominant in the ad tech space. But then, during cross-examination, Google's attorneys referenced his own quote from a 2017 article in which he says, We are entering a world where three major titans are going to be competing for ad dollars. Note that he didn't say one major titan. On day two of the trial, the DOJ continued to try to paint Google as a massive player in the online ad space that used its power to block smaller companies from competing, leaving publishers with fewer options. Google's attorneys are trying to argue that the reason Google's products are so popular is because they are better. In Alexandria, Virginia, Grady Trimble, Fox Business. And those are our top consumer stories. Let's take a look at the market prices before the opening bell. Welcome back to the KOM Morning News 743 coming up on 744 now on this Wednesday morning. We're going to start with the future track and we're going to talk about some clouds. They're going to start to gradually increase as we head into the afternoon, evening and overnight hours as uh, Francine makes landfall down across southern Louisiana. And again, while the future track here is showing some isolated showers today, there will be no showers today, unfortunately, but there will be the increasing clouds now. As Francine does get closer to us, there's that remote possibility it could trigger a stray shower or two on our Thursday. Unfortunately, it's looking more and more likely as though we are simply going to remain dry, cloudy, and a little cooler on our Thursday. Uh, outside of that, we're really not expecting much from Francine. And as we go into Friday, Francine continues to haul off to the north, and therefore we will start to eventually see uh, skies clearing across the area uh, for us on our Friday. So here's Francine right now. Winds are still at about 90 miles an hour, so still a Category 1 hurricane. Expected to make landfall later this evening as a Category 2. So this is its location at uh, 1 o'clock today, and it'll be later this evening into the overnight that it makes landfall in southern Louisiana. The track is also pushing it further east. It was originally even going to come up right along through this zone here, but now we're getting you know a better picture as to the course that Francine will take and be north of Jackson, Mississippi by Thursday at one and then near the Memphis area as we head into our Friday. And remember this uh, cone of uncertainty here on the path uh, originally for Friday stretched from Springfield to Nashville, and you can see it's considerably narrower. Now, for any reason, something manages to coax Francine a little further west. West. We could get a few showers out of it east of 69, but in all honesty, things are looking pretty solid on it taking this course, leaving us unfortunately high and dry. And I say that because you folks at home know our drought conditions not getting any better. We still need a lot of rain around the area, and we're just not going to get any from this. And you can see on the future track where the main bulk of the precipitation stays off to well off to our east, but the cloud cover stretching very far outside of that zone. That's why we're at least going to have the cloudy skies as we go into our Thursday and the first portion of our Friday before skies will begin to clear later in the day on Friday as Francine rolls on out of here. We also have the haze to contend with the smoke tracker showing we're still going to be dealing with that today. Uh, it's from the wildfires out to the west and it's going to continue to impact us and it'll last into our Thursday, but as clouds increase on Thursday, we won't really be able to tell. But you can see from our camera at 7th and range line very clearly that that haze is still out there. 65 in Joplin right now. Wind is variable at about three miles an hour and temperatures gradually beginning to warm. Still cool out west. Yates Center Sedan at 51 degrees and you head a little further south and east and we're starting to warm up. We've got mid 60s out here. Uh, we've had a spread of almost 20 degrees of temperatures from Yates Center down to Carthage. Carthage was up near 70 earlier this morning while Yates Center was in the low 50s. So some of us are not much warmer. Yates Center, you are now two degrees warmer than where you were 24 hours ago, but further south and east you go, we're upwards of 10, almost 15 degrees warmer than where we were at this same time yesterday morning. As we get through the rest of the morning, again, sunny skies initially, mid 60s by 8, low 80s by 11, and that is ahead of highs today, right around 90. Our average is 85. Some locations could even go about 91, 92 degrees out there. Francine, the cloud cover at least, brings our temperatures back closer to average for Thursday and Friday. We'll start to heat back up into the weekend near 90 by Sunday. Day. Could see a few isolated showers and thunderstorms as we kick off the next work week. Temperatures remaining above average for most of next week into the upper 80s. Let's check your forecast. We're back with more right after this. 
Well, Americans bought nearly 50 million vinyl records last year, and it's a revival of sorts. And maybe a perfect time to part with a treasured collection. Carter Evans has more. Americans are in love with LPs again. This one would be the best one. Oh. That one. That's Music to the ears of Sandy Chase, who's been preparing for the vinyl revival for decades. You can see, get an idea of what we've been doing with our lives the last 50, 60 years. Right. This is kind of an archive of your life. He started collecting records at the age of 12. Ten years later, he had 10,000 and went into business. Actually, I didn't intend to open the store to make money. You wanted people to come in and sell you records. I bought more than I sold. Considered the go-to guy for jazz and classical, famous singers flocked to his store on L.A.'s trendy Melrose Avenue. Frank Sinatra was a customer. He ordered records. Michael Jackson said, this is my favorite record store. Herb Alpert, everybody at some point did business with us. What about the rappers? Biggie Smalls, Warren G, PM Don, Pete Rock. They bought rock, they bought jazz, they bought the spoken word. Every room in the building is now floor to ceiling records. At least half a million. Let them know what There's, you're looking uh, for. Steve Miller band. Okay. Yeah. St Steve Miller. Yeah. Henry? And chances are archivist Henry Gastelum can find it. Okay, Steve Miller. Ha, I thought for a moment I, I, yeah. got, I got one that you didn't have, but no. nope, you got a few. Abracadabra. With no labels on the shelves, it'll be a steep learning curve for the next owner. Chase is ready to retire and is asking $5 million for the storefront. Does Henry come with the store? Yeah, you can have Henry. I'll throw Henry in there. Yeah, sure. What happens when someone actually does buy it? What are you going to do? I'm going to Morocco and live with my beautiful wife. <laughs> That's it, you're done, huh? Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. No dramatic mic drop, just a change of tune. Quite a collection there, quite a collection. Uh, an impressive collection. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, my parents had a pretty good record collection, yeah. but not quite that expansive. Great so. to see. Music that lives on. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, warm weather living on across the area. It's going to be above normal again today. Let's start with a quick look at the future track. So again, we'll have clouds gradually increasing as we head into the afternoon and evening. And although there are showers showing up there on future track, we will not see any showers today. We do have that light or slight possibility of a stray shower or two on Thursday. But in all honesty, at this point, the latest data out of Francine seems to suggest it is going to stay too far to our east to give us any kind of rainfall. As of right now, there it is, 90 mile an hour wind, still a Category 1 hurricane, but eventually expected to make landfall late tonight as a Category 2 storm in southern Louisiana. And as it tracks up to the north, it will stay far enough to our east that we'll get cloud cover from Francine, which will bring our temperatures down a bit. And that's really going to be about it out there, which we can see. I'll step to the other side on the future track. Bulk of the precipitation as we go through Thursday and Friday staying to our east, but you can see it tries. It tries to get over here, but we're really just not expecting anything out of Francine. We're also again going to have to contend with the haze, the smoke from the wildfires out to the west. It'll give us another hazy day today, and that will continue into Thursday. There's a view of that haze. Quick look at temperatures. 65 in Joplin right now. Still a good spread of temperatures. We've got low 50s in the parts of southeast Kansas. And we're back into the 60s as you go a little further south and east. Temperatures today will be a bit above normal again. We'll have a look at that, plus the news you need to know when we come back. Well, here's a check of today's top headlines. The news you need to know before you head out the door. Parsons, Kansas police arrest a man in a kidnapping case. On Sunday, authorities responded to a robbery in the Canterbury Inn where a suspect with a yellow bandana and an AR-style rifle kidnapped the woman and stole nearly $500 in a set of car keys. The suspect was later found at a home on Deer Street where the victim was rescued. Official charges have not yet been filed. Authorities in Jasper County have arrested a suspect in the death of eight puppies found in a plastic tote outside the Joplin Humane Society. All of the puppies were found dead inside. Official charges are pending for the suspect. 
and it's going to be above normal today. Average high about 85. We're looking at 90 degrees out there, maybe even 91, 92. A few clouds by this afternoon, and those clouds will gradually increase late evening and overnight. And we'll eventually fall back into the low to mid 60s for our lows tonight. Francine making landfall tonight will bring us at least some cloud cover as we head into Thursday and Friday and bring our temperatures down to normal. Unfortunately, not really looking at much in terms of rain. Back up above normal by the weekend, and a few isolated to widely scattered shower and thunderstorm chances next week as we remain a bit on the toasty side. Alrighty. Well, high school students in Virginia surprised their favorite custodian with his dream car, a cherry red Jeep Wrangler. A GoFundMe back in May to raise money to buy the car for their favorite school custodian, Francis Apraku. What was supposed to take four years ended up taking four months with the help of the community. Apraku got his big surprise on Monday when the boys and community members gathered in the parking lot of a local restaurant, uh, the local restaurant Vienna Inn. Certainly a big surprise and a nice vehicle that he got there. I'm sure he looks very excited to have Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Great, great effort there by the students to yeah. do that. And the whole him. community. Absolutely. I mean, four years and instead they got it done four yes. months. <laughs> well, thank you all so much for letting us put the good in your morning. We'll be back with more news and weather today at noon. Have a great rest of your morning.